Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM20 story from Dorking Wanderers with me, Daniel. It's season 10, episode 6, and today is arguably one of the biggest games of this series so far. Certainly a big moment on the pitch. We've got a chance, and a reasonable one as well, to reach the FA Cup quarter-final. We play fellow championship side Watford in the fifth round, and this is a proper opportunity for us. Our finances are looking great, we're looking good on the pitch, things are going pretty well. And this could just be the icing on the cake. We're trying to prepare this club for the long term future. We want the last 10 years to be fruitful. We want to have good facilities. A good stadium that's our own home. Something we can call our own. We also want to have good junior coaching. Good youth recruitment. All of those things. And financial runs like the FA Cup are big for that. Not to mention as you know from Torquay last year. It's my favourite competition. So if we can make it to the quarterfinals, It will be a very special day. But we'll go and focus on all that in a moment. A massive game for us in the Cup. But firstly, let's talk about the league. We have just fallen away a little bit. We're now six points off the playoffs. We said we expected this to come. We have got a game in hand against Reading, so there is a chance we can get back in it. And we have been on a bit of a long run without a win. But even that's not a disaster. I mean, as you can see at the top right there, two of them are draws and a few more are as well. And last time out against Watford, we avoided defeat on the road. So hopefully that will give us confidence today. But before we go and look at our recent results, how our new signings are settling in and play this big FA Cup tie, a massive thank you to everyone who continues to follow the series and channel. I really do appreciate your support over the last few weeks. The number of views has kept creeping up and it continues to increase at the moment. So thank you so much for your support. If you are looking forward to this massive FA Cup tie, please do put a thumbs up on the video. It does make such a difference. I'm really loving my time at Dorking Wanderers. It's a little bit more challenging than last year with Torquay, although this season's been a bit of a breeze but I just feel at home at this club I feel like it's the right balance of challenge so hopefully in a couple more years we can become that side that can compete for Premier League football but at the moment this is the sort of day we've got to look forward to so if you want to make sure you don't miss any of the action from this series our other long term story the head coach or our two weekly series every Sunday please do subscribe to the channel and turn that notification bell on down below we'll also have occasional live streams going through transfer windows in some of our stories we've got our network save which started on Sunday at 12 o'clock clock myself here co-host over a season a massive thank you to everyone that came and watched the first one of that it did surpass my expectations so thank you so much and then again our stadium review series on Sunday afternoon we're just trying to fill the void from a selfish point of view we used to go every Saturday try and find a game around the country and now we haven't got that so we're just filling that void by talking about the grounds we've been to if you've been or you'll support the club we're talking about come and let us know down in the comments any features we've missed what you like most about the ground we don't try to be controversial, we try to find the positives in everything, so hopefully you'll enjoy that as well. But thank you to everyone who supported the first two from that series. A new one obviously will come out every Sunday at 4.30, and thank you so much for your continued support. I really do appreciate it greatly. But let's move on to Dorking Wanderers. There's important news afoot here. So obviously we had our transfer window last time out. It was a chaotic episode. You can catch up with it in the eye above. We had a really hectic deadline day and a few days before it as well, actually. We continued our momentum on the road. We picked up a draw from absolutely nowhere against Norwich. And you can see, if we go and have a look at the schedule, we haven't actually won a game since then. But more importantly, we're barely losing games. So even in that seven-game winless run in the league, we've only lost two and we've picked up five draws. And you just can't ask for more than that from this side. And if you look at the run, we've actually played against some huge teams. So the likes of Palace and Stoke, who were the two favourites to go up at the start of the season. You've got Blackburn and Norwich. Both of them were up in the playoff hunt. I think Norwich definitely were. Blackburn down, struggling now. They're having a poor season. And who else was in there? Watford, who we played today. They're in mid-table, but we were resting players for the cup. And then we also had Nottingham Forest, who have been the entertainers of the series. Bristol City just behind us. The other side, we lost two. We don't really have anything to complain about. So the five games that we've had off camera, we lost to Bristol City. Brendan Lindsay, a late penalty, but it wasn't enough. Adam Idar scored the winning goal, as it turned out to be. A hero, obviously, for Ireland in our other series, the head coach. And then against Crystal Palace, a two-all draw. Mason Greenwood catching us out late on. It just shows what we're competing against, really. Brendan Lindsay again with a goal. Zach Council got the second, and there's a reason we need to talk about him. He's agreed a loan deal for next year, too. So the wonder kid will be staying. 
that's important news for keeping us up next year. Just because we've had a good season this season, we know it could go wrong. So keeping those key players is crucial. Then against Nottingham Forest, we lost 2-1. The 90th minute, it really was a sucker punch. Brendan Lindsay again with a goal in that one. He then scored a penalty against Stoke. And John Webb coming back into the team got the one against Watford. Brendan Lindsay was out injured in that one. And I'm not sure if he's going to be back today. He is. He's just about fit, but his condition's not great. So I think it's going to be John Webb from the start. But let's go and get into it and find out. The one thing I am going to talk to you about on the way is our goalkeeper who we signed in January. Deadline day signing Mark Ball from Leicester, 105,000. He's just starting to settle in now. He's already crept up to three-star ability. He's already improving in terms of his stats. The decision-making and the positioning are massive ones for me. Mentally, he's increasing his ability. And that's because he's playing regular football at a higher level. So half a season of that, and he'll either be ready to be a number one next year, or he'll be a very solid backup, or we might even be able to sell him on. But the two that have gone, Everett and Robinson, made one sub-appearance between them. So not much going on there. And Liam Morgan has been training woefully. His composure's poor. He did then join the club eventually. But he hasn't been much of an addition yet. So Shane Thompson's actually been playing centre-half because we've had an injury to Parsons. And as we come into today's game, we'll be hoping we can sneak a result. So let's go and get into our FA Cup tie. You can see the dynamics still holding up well despite the seven league games without a victory. And this is a massive opportunity for the club. Forrest are playing West Brom in one of the other ties, so we could even have an all-championship quarter-final. Watford slight favourites, though. They're in oh, slightly better form than us, not really much. But let's have a look at our lineup for today. So Shane Thompson, as you can see, has been playing centre-half. But I don't think we need him today as Parsons is fit again. And it's such an increase that we have to get him in there. So that means Thompson will go on the bench for Loveless, who, by the way, has been training exceptionally. He really is starting to reach that potential. We've worked out new mentoring groups, which we will look out after the game. And it has worked to massive effect. So Loveless has been one of the main beneficiaries of that. If we go through the rest of the team, Bentley's been playing in the league, but I'm going to bring Moles back in for this cup game. He is about to sign a new deal. No, he has signed it now. So Stefan Moles has agreed a five grand a week deal. A bit of a step down from what they were asking for before. So Stefan Moles, the contract situation is resolved. Unfortunately, we're not in the same position with Matthew Smith yet. So we may well lose him for free. But we'll wait and see on that front. In terms of the subs bench, I know he's not completely fit. But Lindsay's going to come on for Manny Cook. Manny Cook is not a championship player. He's a utility emergency backup. Lindsay's there and if we need him, he can come on. Who else can we bring in? Not really anyone. I mean, White's doing okay over on the left wing. He's finally got his first assist and has just started to increase his performance level. And I think apart from that, we're as strong as we can be. So what that means today is we've got Mark Bull in goal. James, who has also agreed to stay until next year, alongside Thomas at fullback. Walker and Parsons reunited at centre-half. We've got Moles and Tordoff in the middle. Council and White on the wings. And then Peter McLaughlin in behind John Webb up front who I'm hoping will refine his League One form. So in we go to the FA Cup fifth round tie against Watford. And can we reach a cup quarter final for the first ever time? 4-4-2 four, four, for Watford then. They've got a good player in Lewis Southgate in central midfield. Up front, they've got Dominic Calvert-Lewin, who obviously was banging them in in the Premier League in real life before this lockdown. And he's still a very good player here. Scoring at nearly one in two for Watford across his six years at the club on 80 grand a week. I mean, I know he's 31 now, but he hasn't lost his physicality. He's a proper player. So this is going to be a tough test for us. There's no doubt in that. We're going to encourage the lads to get into the first half. We've got a tunnel interview, of course. Both teams in poor form. Jack Walker, he has to be fit enough. And Stefan Moles has agreed his contract. Hopefully the new lease of life we needed. So into the first half we go. It's Dorking Wanderers v Watford. Let's see if we can make the cup quarter final. Well, it's been an interesting start. We're back with 25 minutes, midway through a bit of a scramble in the middle of the pitch. Watford pick it up and go down the left. The right back, James, has been beaten to the byline. In and over the bar, Leek had to score that. Three yards out and he's headed over into an empty net. How has he missed that? I mean, we're not complaining, but we're yet to have a shot on target. Watford dominating this match. We're going to demand a bit more. But we tend to the break, it's nil-nil. And for that, we can't complain. We've said so many times this season, we're plucky. When we need to, we nick a result from somewhere. And at half-time, despite not having a shot on target, we're still very much in this FA Cup tie. So we're going to encourage the lads. Probably not the longest episode, the way this one's going. We might drop to a balanced mentality, because it seems we're getting outclassed with a 4-4-2. And hopefully we'll be able to take advantage. I mean, we've got to the hour mark and there's still nothing going on here. 
So I should be dropped to balance just for five minutes. He's a Watford corner. I might regret this. To the back post. Oh, it's bubbling around. It's all over the place. It's finally cleared away. How on earth did that stay out of our net? But 20 minutes to go. We have got extra time we've got to be aware of. Fifth round replays cancelled, of course. So I need to be very careful with my decision making here. John Webb is going to be replaced by Brendan Lindsay. The one true goal scorer this season. Aaron White is going to be replaced by Craig Maguire. He likes to be a winger on the left-hand side, but we're going to drop him to support. And I think that's it for now. I'm aware Stefan Moles can't do 120, and probably Grant Parsons as well. But I don't know which one to take off yet, so we'll just wait and see. But here we are, for the first time we're on the ball. Though it's not in a good position, that looked a bit perilous. Back to Bull, the goalkeeper. He's got two full-backs he can aim for, but he's taking his time. He finds James. He's got two in the middle, but goes back to Parsons. Don't lose it there. Corbett's nicked it. He's going to score, is he? It's straight at ball. I mean, he should have scored that. He should have certainly done a lot better. And now McLaughlin's picked up a knock, and our whole world is coming crashing down. So George Burns will come on for him, the latest in a line of players to complain about not getting a new contract. And with 78 minutes gone, we still haven't had a shot on target. So I'm going to ask the lads to demand a bit more. A few focused, but we're just basically hanging on at the moment. We're hoping for penalties. 87 minutes, no shots on target, though we are coming forward on the left here. If we could nick it with one shot on goal, that would be incredible. But as I say, that Tordov's been mugged and Corbett's in again. Second time lucky for him. No, it's over the bar. That's wayward from Corbett. He's come on for Leek, who missed his own sitter in the first half. 16 he's got for finishing. But either way, we're in five minutes to stoppage time. Parsons heading away. It's backs to the wall. But here's the one chance we need. Council on the counter-attack. He skins one. Skins two. And now he's going through. Shoots from the edge. He's straight at a keeper. Oh, that was the chance. The first shot on target. And we could have stole it with a brilliant wonder kick goal. But we've given it away again. How many times are we going to get mugged in possession there? Moles commits the foul. It's going to be a yellow, surely. And let's just hope they don't score from the free kick. I actually probably agree with him giving away the foul there. It's Bond on the left-hand side. Ball in, whipped. Headed away by Thomas. Brilliant defending. And we're clinging on for extra time. Here's Rush. Tries to get it back in the mixer again. It falls for Corbett. This time it's wide, but a free kick's given. And apparently Flynn was offside. But with five minutes of stoppage time almost up, I think we're heading into an extra 30. I've no idea how we've survived this. We've been woeful. We don't deserve it. I think we still get a fourth sub in extra time. But let's just make sure we see these 10 seconds out first. Mole surging forward. Can we get a final shot in? No. Extra time it will be. I don't quite know how we're in this game. We're going to encourage the lads. I'm not sure what we can do tactically, to be honest. I might try and focus the play down the middle because we've got that extra man in central midfield. We're going to go a bit more direct because where we're playing short, we just seem to be getting caught on the ball. And we're not having possession anyway, so it doesn't matter. Is there anything else I can do there? I don't think so. So let's go and get into extra time and hope I haven't just shot ourselves in the foot. Okay, I've had my warning to take off Luke Thomas because he's knackered. But he's actually been the best player on the pitch for us, so I don't want to do that. Parsons is the other one, so it might have to be Moles. Moles is going to be replaced. Or is it going to be Council? Can I take off a wonder kid? I don't think I can. So Moles is going to be replaced by Matthew Smith. And this could be the biggest regret I ever have. But let's go and get back into it. 15 minutes of stoppage time to go. Free kick on the right-hand side. The extra time's up here. Smith in the Parsons. He's offside. Oh, we've played a minute over. I thought Matthew Smith had just made a huge difference. It's now half-time in extra time. That was the last kick. And I thought we'd managed to nick it there. But in we go. We've got 15 minutes of extra time left. Otherwise, penalties is going to decide who goes to the FA Cup quarterfinal. Corbett's had an awful game. He's basically kept us in it with the chances he's missed. Defensively, we've got good ratings, but it's a Watford corner. It's bobbling around all over and it's in. Mike Murray scores. And five minutes remaining. We're going to have to go attacking. We're going to have to gamble. We're going to have to risk letting in a second. And it's heartbreaking, the FA Cup. Not for the first time in this series. It's happened at earlier stages as well. But this time it's heartbreaking the fifth round. And we've lost our chance at a quarter-final place. Alan tore off with a book in. Just one minute to go. And we've got a throw in on the left-hand side. It's Luke Thomas to Burns. Back to Thomas. Delivers in. Lindsay. It's 1-1. We've made it to penalties eventually. And Brendan Lindsay always this season. Always is the hero. Absolutely fantastic. We nick a penalty shootout and we may well lose it from here. We take a moles off and Webb. I've just realised there are two best penalty takers. But it had to be done. 
We've made it to penalties and it's a brilliant last minute goal from Lindsay. And <laughs> just look at those attributes. We've got no chance in this shootout, have we? Let's rank them in order. We're going to have Brendan Lindsay first, Tordoff second, Lewis James, Burns, Council. This is woeful. Maguire, Walker, Thomas ahead of Parsons because of the composure. And then the same for Smith ahead of Mark Ball, the keeper. But in we go. Let's find the shootout. It's probably backs against the wall, but at least we've managed to make it. Brendan Lindsay, you absolute hero. Now can Mark Ball do the same? He can't. It's into the bottom corner. And I tell you what, if he gets us through the shootout, he will become a club hero. Here's Brendan Lindsay for our first penalty. The only reason we're here to start with... And he scores. Brendan Lindsay, poor penalty rating, but never misses one. Up steps Martin Murray. The voice starting to creak, but here he comes. Murray White! That's what we needed. Mark Ball might not be forced into a save. Alan Tord off the man who can put us in the lead. Of course, not a good rating, but so often reliable. And he is again. Slides it just past the reach of the outstretched right arm of the Watford keeper. And we lead 2-1 with two penalties taken each. Rush steps up. If there's ever a time for Mark Ball's save, now's it. He's on the spot and he's hit the post. The little jig and dance worked. And Rush has missed his penalty. James steps up. This one I'm not confident about at all. His finishing rating's three. And it's straight down the middle. We shouldn't have put him in there. But we didn't really have an option. So we have missed our first penalty. We're still one ahead though. Even if Watford score this, it's with a penalty extra taken. Nurse steps up. Into the corner. 2-2. Two, two. We've got the penalty in hand though. It's always harder chasing. Can Burns get us the goal? I tell you what, if he scores this, I'll offer him that new contract he's moaning about. Burns into the corner. He'll have a new contract next episode. George Burns has put us within touching distance of the quarterfinal. And Watford have got to score this. It's Corbett who missed so many clear-cut chances for them. It's Mark Bullen goal for us. The January signing who has played five games for the club. He's come in as a makeshift replacement for Ollie Robinson. And a save here could make him a history hero for the club. Not the most coherent sentence and not the best attempt at a save. Corbett scores and now we just need to score our fifth penalty to get through. Who's taking it? I can't even remember who it was. Zach Council, the wonder kid, has the chance to put us in an FA Cup quarter final. We've just extended his loan till next year and he could be about to give us the biggest moment in our cup history. Zach Council steps up. Scores and then Dorking Wanderers are into the quarter final. A wonderful day, a wonderful result. How we got back into that shootout, I don't know. Brendan Lindsay, the man, with an 121st minute goal in second half extra time stoppage time. He wasn't even fit and he got us to the shootout. He then put us in the lead by scoring his penalty and we stayed there ever since. Dorking Wanderers won, Watford won, a 4 3 victory on penalties. And let's go and find out who we've got in the quarters. We're of course going to say we're delighted with the lads. It was a remarkable performance. We weren't at our best. We had to cling on. And again, we were plucky. We were fighting. We were dog-like. We were absolutely brilliant. We defended so hard and we deserved our result in the end. We've got fitness concerns. Of course we have. We've only got three days till the next league game. So there's going to be a few players getting a training rest. Let's have a look at this McLaughlin injury. Three to four weeks. So he's out for most of the rest of the season, including the quarter final. But we're going to skip ahead to Friday where hopefully we'll get the draw. We'll postpone our youth mentoring groups chat until the next episode because obviously this one went to extra time. It was a little bit more tense than we expected. And we'll be back in two days' time to find out who we've got in the FA Cup quarter final. Here we go then. The FA Cup sixth round draw featuring the likes of Liverpool and United at the top end and Dorking Wanderers and Nottingham Forest. There's also Newcastle, Huddersfield, Burnley and Sheffield United. So who are we going to get? I'm almost torn. Do we want a home tie against Forest, a chance to get to the semis at Wembley? Or do we want United or Liverpool away from home in the quarters? A massive tie, another million pound in the bank. Maybe that's the preferred option long term. I'm torn between wanting the magic of the FA Cup, my favourite competition, and securing the long term future of Dorking. So let's just get the first team out of the hat. It's Dorking Wanderers. So we can probably rule out the top Premier League teams now because it's a home tie. So now it's just about can we get through. So fingers crossed it'll be Nottingham Forest. Let's click the button. It's Liverpool. That's not quite what we wanted. Even worse, we're going to be missing Zach Council because it's his parent club. We're going to be in a bit of trouble here. I'm really not a fan of that. Liverpool are parent club who we've got in the quarterfinals. 
probably the end of our run. They're still doing pretty well in the Premier League. Third place they are there. They've obviously got a stream of wonder clips, including Fedorov, who we nearly signed on deadline day in January. That's going to be a difficult tie. We're not going to have Peter McLaughlin. We've got Lewis James with a suspension. And all of the other smaller teams, Burnley were away to Newcastle, Forest away to United. It looks like the dream's over for the smaller teams. Of course, Burnley and Forest, two sides that have featured quite heavily in the last couple of episodes of the head coach, my other series. You can find out in the eye above why that is. It's a bit of a bizarre one. But we have drawn Liverpool. It's amazing that we've reached the quarterfinals. It's just a shame that it's going to be over. But of course, that means we'll be back quite soon yet again. We will be back in three weeks' time, or in fact two weeks and a day as it stands now, to face Liverpool in the FA Cup quarter-final. When we were mid-table and mediocre in League One two years ago, who thought we were going to be doing this? Yes, the playoff push for the championship's probably over, but we've got a different priority now. It's Dorking Wanderers v Liverpool in the FA Cup quarter-final, and it will be coming to you live in two days' time. So if you want to make sure you don't miss that and any of the other content on the channel, please do subscribe and turn that notification bell on down below. You'll get alerts to when all the new episodes release. If you did enjoy this one and that plucky performance against Watford in the FA Cup, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Any words to describe Brendan Lindsay or even the cojones of that council to score the penalty? What an unbelievable moment for the youngster. Unfortunately, he can't enjoy the quarters because Liverpool have ruled him out. He can't play against his parent club, but it's still a remarkable achievement. It goes down as ending our long winless run as well, despite being a draw technically. And the lads, again, they never know when they're beaten. Against Norwich in the last episode, we got a result late on. Against West Brom earlier in the season, we nicked a result late on. Against Watford, 121st minute to nick a penalty shootout. And then we got ahead and won that. These boys are something else, and it's a really brilliant save to be a part of. We're not the best side in the world. We have our off days, but it's a very good club to be the manager of. So, Dorking Wanderers, top of my books now. Let me know in the comments what you think we should do for the quarters. We're, of course, going to go full strength, but do you think we should make any tactical tweaks? Obviously, McLaughlin out. Do we go for a holding midfielder instead? I just don't know. We could, of course, bank on Liverpool resting players and us trying to go for our usual game, impose ourselves on them. But I don't know what the best answer is here. So let me know what you would do if you were in charge of our Dork inside at the moment. We'll be back for that game in a couple of days time. I do hope to see you there. Of course, in the meantime, we'll be back with the head coach tomorrow at the normal time of 4.30. We'll be playing our first games in charge of a new club in that one. So do make sure you come and check it out. We've also on Sunday got our two new series continuing. The second episode of our Barnet v Chesterfield Network career. Thank you to everyone who watched the first one at the weekend. And then our stadium review series into its third week. A more laid back chat about the footballing world and the stadiums we've visited across the country. But a massive thanks for watching this one and joining me for another wonderful moment in this Dorking Wanderers career. I really hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. And I'll see you next time for what is certainly the biggest game of the series. A chance to make it to Wembley against Liverpool in the FA Cup. <laughs>